welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update on news and information about DCS World. I'm your host, of course, Prickly Hedgehog, and wherever you are in the world, I do hope you are doing well, and I just want to thank you once more for tuning in. And if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Don't forget to like and subscribe, everybody, for more content. Uh, wow, kind of a scorcher today in Minnesota on my way home across the Twin Cities. It was a uh, 101 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 38 degrees Celsius for the non-imperial measurement people. In the United States, of course, we, we are sticking with the imperial system. Uh, imperial system or death, apparently. Although we do like to branch out uh, occasionally where it suits us if we're working with our allies who, uh, who enjoy the metric system. So we are capable of uh, both, but uh, we choose not to. Like I said, imperial measurements or death. Uh, now, speaking of scorching, what an exciting little newsletter this week we had from Eagle Dynamics focused on the Apache. In this case, of course, we are referring to the AH-64D. Now, the development report here indicates that they are working pretty hard on what they have described as a very um, extraordinarily complex and time-consuming model of the cockpit and the external model. Uh, they have spent, therefore, an enormous amount of time on research and work that's gone into making these features as detailed and accurate as possible. Special attention has been given to the pilot crew models and animations, which is neat. And indeed, it looks like there's an uh, ocular feature here, of course, that the pilot has for uh, information similar to the helmet-mounted queuing systems available in some of the jets that we have, uh, a la the F-16 and, of course, the F-18. Now, much of the avionics work focuses on the navigation system and TSD pages. This is in parallel with the IHADs or, uh, and the, excuse me, and the uh, PNVS, the TADS, the Area Weapon System and the Rocket Management Subsystem, Longbow Hellfire Modular Missile System and the AGM-114K. In addition, <coughs> excuse me, the Aircraft Survivability Equipment, or ASE, is also in development, and this incorporated the radar signal detecting set and the Common Missile Warning System, or CMWS. These will be available at launch and greatly increase mission survivability, which is good news. If you're going to release a product like this, people are going to try it out in a combat theater, and there's nothing worse than having a product that isn't able to defend itself or do all of the things it uh, should do. Um, with regards to that particular feature, uh, sometimes that can be a little bit annoying when uh, you expect it to be able to evade missiles um, and those features aren't fully implemented. So I appreciate them doing that, especially in a helicopter, which is a little bit more vulnerable to ground fire and ground based uh, rockets than perhaps some of the um, uh, jet aircraft, which fly faster and can fly higher. Now, the flight model is also progressing nicely, according to ED, and they're now developing the flight augmentation systems that include the uh, SCAS, or SCAS, and the hold modes, modeling of the T700 GE 701D ED ECU engine and related systems is also underway. So that pretty much ends the newsletter on that front with regards to Eagle Dynamics. Of course, we are still waiting for the Hind, which uh, WAGS has been showcasing over the last week and a half. We saw a video earlier this week showcasing the aircraft's uh, ability to launch from runways, and especially if it's heavy, and also from uh, static positions, such as elevated positions or ground positions, and he discussed some of the ground effects and uh, unique features of the Hind and how it, how it operates. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to compare these two aircraft. Hopefully the Hind will be available for download here soon. Uh, we were promised it, I believe, in quarter two, where we've moved just into quarter three here. So they are, you know, slightly behind schedule, and I suspect we will have that aircraft fairly soon based on what he, uh, Wags was showing, was showcasing over the last week and a half, as I indicated. So, yeah, stay tuned for more on that. Stay tuned for more on the map updates for the Marianas as well. And, of course, Syria with uh, Ugra Media showcasing some interesting stuff on Cyprus, which, again, is going to be another um, theater of basis that we can launch operations from, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, remind me. Hopefully I can come back to the Fallon thing, too. Uh, in fact, we'll talk about that now. Speaking of bases, 
Uh, Ward Carroll, uh, many of you are probably familiar with his channel now, who's doing a lot of stuff on the F-14. He's a former Rio, he's a uh, musician, and of course, author. And he had an interesting video this week that showcased some flying experiences he had back in the mid-80s with constant peg operations. And he was flying out of Fallon. And there was a secret uh, program going on, um, which also uh, masked, if you like, or um, um, it was going on in conjunction with the development of the F-117, um, the Nighthawks, the um, stealth aircraft. And what he was doing <clears throat> was just similar um, BFM and, and AFM, or ACM, excuse me, um, combat with actual MiGs that the U.S. had captured. One of them was actually the MiG-23. Now, there was a little bit of a snippet, if I remember rightly, on Razbam's Twitter, I think. Some more work is being done on the MiG-23. Uh, hopefully we can come back to that topic at some stage. Uh, I do need to do a third-party update, and I do need to um, get back in touch with Razbam on some stuff that we were talking about together with one of the developers, and just been super, super busy. I haven't had a time to... Haven't had much time um, to do uh, all the things I want to do. But anyway, uh, so there was the MiG-23 was um, mentioned by Razbam as getting some more attention. And this links back to what I was saying before about Ward Carroll doing dissimilar uh, operations with actual MiGs, including the MiG-23 and the MiG-21. And I think they might have had MiG-17s or 15s as well. And... They were able, therefore, to use these in actual combat to get an actual experience of what those aircraft would do and how they would compare against, a, um, at the time, modern aircraft like the F-14, which was the backbone of the Navy fleet at that point in time during the, you know, the height of the Cold War. So um, where this is leading to is um, they were operating out of Fallon, and I really hope ED... I mean, I need to do a separate video on this, but... ED needs to develop Fallon, in my opinion. It's not available in the, in the Nevada map right now. Uh, Topona is, I think, um, and you can fly out of air, but uh, Fallon nearby is not, and it would be really handy to be able to um, do operations, red air operations out of there, and mimic some of the um, combat operations, if you like, or practice operations that the um, US Navy and the Air Force were doing during that time because we have some of the aircraft and we can re recreate some of those cool experiences that were mentioned by Ward Carroll in that video. So check it out. I'll try and find a link for that. I'll try and um, upload that. It's worth a, worth a watch just from an interest point of view. There's some really good information that he's producing um, that are you know broader overviews of doctrinal things and some of the um, ways in which they were using um, aircraft and training during that period, which is neat stuff. All right, so um, in addition to that, snippet of third-party information india foxed echo which is actually um, working on the mb339 for dcs world um, it is available now as a download i believe uh, they were going to make that a purchasable um, module as well they have decided to um, in addition to that aircraft release the what they're calling the dcs version of a g.91 now this is an older aircraft it was developed way back initially in around about 1958 uh, or so. Um, primarily it was for the Italian uh, aerospace industry um, and uh, produced by Fiat and it was also used by the the Germans and I believe the Portuguese Air Force who made extensive use of it during the Portuguese colonial war in Angola and Mozambique believe it or not. So uh, like I said a Cold War aircraft there are three versions that they're going to make of this. So Cap from um, Grim Reapers will be pleased because he likes this era of jet aircraft, which don't have all the modern, you know, swank, if you like, of uh, DDIs and MFDs and all that kind of stuff. He prefers these more analog jets, uh, according to statements he's made in the past. So he'll be excited. Uh, the three versions are the R1B, the Italian version, the R3, which is the German version, and there's the Pan version, which is an aerobatic version which is converted from the A variant so uh, they don't have a release window yet um, and the screenshots that you're probably looking at are 
the caveat is that they're very preliminary so again i don't know a lot about this aircraft it's definitely it's a essentially a lightweight strike fighter and um, has its origins as far back as sort of 1953 so definitely an older aircraft be interesting to see how that comes together we've got a lot of things going on in the third party so uh, i don't know if i mentioned it already but we do need to do a third party um, update i think i haven't done one of those videos for a while so i need to reach out to some of these peeps and you know see how things are going and maybe uh, gather a little bit more information before i embark on a video but that's kind of where things are at okay so i'm gonna go back to drinking the beer that i picked up uh a nice i think it's a belgian yeah it is a belgian blonde here it's a pretty ubiquitous sort of belgian blonde i believe it's pretty common in in belgium uh, it's called leaf uh, according to the french um, pronunciation of the word otherwise i think it's uh Lefa. but uh belgian ale just wanted something non-domestic that was uh lighter six percent alcohol might be part of the bottle to throttles uh stuff if you haven't checked that out check out the air warfare group juice and tyro did a nice little video discussing uh, cocktails and uh, aviation related drinks which was fun all of them good fun and responsible drinking of course so let's wrap up this week's video once again thanks again i'm excited about the apache i'm excited about the hind let me know what your thoughts are on either of those two aircraft or what you enjoy about the update this week in terms of vr whether that's worked for you and we'll chat next time and once again thank you for all the likes and subscribes the channel's growing nicely so keep it coming it's a short video this week and again i just hope everyone's doing well out there stay safe over the summer summer can be a tough time out there on the roads i know for a fact um working in that uh, kind of safety area that uh, uh this is a bad time on our roads so do take care out there and um, enjoy the summer but uh make good decisions all right cheerio everybody take care out there this is prickly hedgehog out we'll see you next time